Today's lecture 8 of basic electronics is about vein bridge oxalator. Welcome to our channel class like community. So today we will be dealing with the topic vein bridge oxalator. So you still remember this word oxalator. What does it mean? It means that it will convert your DC to AC. Right. It will convert DC to AC. As well as it is an electrical device which will that means the gener generating periodic waveform will be at the output without any external input. Okay. Now see this vein bridge oxalator is a very low frequency oxalator. That means its frequency will be very low and its range will be between some few kilohertz to 1 megahertz. Okay. So this is the diagram of this vein bridge oxalator and this portion is the feedback path which is the connected to the non-inverting terminal and the rest is connected to the inverting terminal. A inverting terminal means your minus and non-inverting means your plus. Okay, so we will read one by one line and we will discuss it with the diagram. Okay. So see, it says that the working of the vein bridge oscillator. So, the feedback signal in this oscillator, the feedback signal in this oscillator circuit is connected to the non-inverting input terminal so that the op-amp works uh, as a non-inverting amplifier. So, let's see the diagram. So, this as I told, this is a feedback so, it is connected to the non-inverting part. This will state that this uh, whole oscillator or this op-amp will work in the non-inverting portion. Okay. The first statement states this. The condition of zero phase shift around the circuit is achieved by balancing the bridge. Zero phase shift is essential for sustained oscillation. Now, what does this statement mean? See, it says that it will be condition of zero phase shift around the circuit will be achieved by balancing the brake at this zero phase shift essential for sustained oscillation. So, this is your bridge that means the feedback part, right? So, here this parallel will be low, low part and this one will be your high part. And if it gives you a thermal noise, that means there will be multiple frequency, but it will take one frequency. As this uh, parallel one RC will be dealing with the low and the series one will be dealing with the high. So, it will neither take the high frequency or the low frequency, but it will take the intermediate one. So, it will take one of the frequency. So, that means we can balance this by the zero phase shift. And we can attain a sustained oscillation. The frequency of the oscillation is the resonant frequency of the balanced bridge and is given by the F expression F0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi RC. Okay, so see, uh, basically it says that the resonant frequency, the frequency of this oscillation is the resonant frequency of the balanced bridge. That means this bridge's bridge balanced resonant frequency is the frequency of oscillation. So basically we say that the F0, F0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi root under R, RC. Okay, both this parallel RC as well as the series RC. Both we will be taking as RC. Okay. That means both R1 and R2 will be equal to R and both C1 and C2 will be equal to R. Okay. So as I told that the F0 will be what is equal to 1 by 2 pi root under RC. See it is R1 plus R2 and C1 plus C2. Okay. So, that means R1 is for the series one and R2 is for the parallel one. 
Okay, when we take both of this as R, so R R and the C one and C two as C C. So whenever we take this out from this root, we will get what? We will get R C. That's why it's been stated that if zero is equal to one by two pi R C. Okay, so you just need to remember that this frequency of oscillation is one by two pi R C. Okay, so we are done with the three point. So uh, the fourth point it states that at resonant frequency F zero, the inverting and the non-inverting input voltages will be equal and in phase, so that the negative feedback signal will be cancelled out by the positive feedback signal. Causing this circuit to oscillate. So, see what it says that the inverting and the non-inverting input voltages will be equal and in phase, so that the negative feedback signal will get cancelled out with the positive feedback, causing the circuit to oscillate. So, this is a bridge. So, what does happen? This inverting and the non-inverting terminal will be in will be equal. That means this both will be equal. What does it do? The negative feedback will now become cancel the positive feedback. Okay, so this will make this part oscillate. Okay. Uh, next is says that the from the analysis of the circuit, it can be seen that the feedback factor is equal to beta. That means beta is a feedback factor is equal to one by three at the frequency of oscillation therefore for sustained oscillation the amplifier must have a gain of 3 so that the loop gain becomes unity okay now let's understand this so we will not move on to the derivation part but we will just remember that beta is have to be equal to 1 by 3 so do you now remember the Barkhausen's criteria Yes, it is what A beta is equal to 1. That means a loop gain is need to be 1. So, this A need to be what? 3. That only it has been saying that the amplifier must have a gain of 3. So, that our loop gain will be equal to 1 to, to prove our Bauchhausen criteria right. Okay. So, this statement states this. And remember that beta is equal to 1 by 3. Okay. And the last statement it says that for an inverting amplifier, the gain is set back by the the gain is set by the feedback resistor network RF and RI and is given as the ratio my, uh, minus RF by RI. So for an inverting amplifier, the gain. So for an inverting amplifier, the gain is RF and the that means it is set to the feedback register network. That is the RF is the frequency and the, so it will be the ratio between RF and RI. Okay. So just remember here two major things. One is your beta is equal to 1 by 3 and the amplifier need to be 3. So you need to prove the Barkhausen's criteria. Next thing which you need to remember is that um, your frequency is equal to 1 by 2 pi RC and the last thing which is you need to remember is your RF is divided by RI and it will be in minus. Okay. So these are the three things that you need to remember for this vein bridge oscillator. And the last statement is that the for an inverting amplifier. So whenever it will be the inverting amplifier at that point of time, our feedback register should be in the ratio of minus RF by RI. Okay. So I hope you understood the vein bridge oscillator and I have done it in points. So you can... Uh, discuss it with your diagram or uh, understand with your diagram with each of the points and so I hope you all understood till then be happy and have a great day
now is the code time nothing will work unless you do i hope all of you understood the lecture of today and thank you for being part of this lecture wow that's impressive you have completed a magic today for more videos subscribe join our facebook group and instagram page for group discussion and live magus videos for exam preparation in an hour we start at class like community for students to learn from a friend in a simple way and support them in their own languages if you are willing to be that one friend who save us at the exam night preparation then please join us by visiting classfly.n